we're back up and rolling. We just packed up camp and uh, Dakota was again still pulling off ticks. I did not have one tick. He's had like five or six on him that he had to remove with his little tick tornado tick key thing, but but whatever. I treat my clothes with permethrin. That seems to work. I'll probably die of cancer from it, but um, I won't have ticks. But <laughs> today's going to be a big day. We got about, what, 26 miles? Yep. So we got about 26 miles to do today. He keeps swearing that the terrain is easier because he did the East Loop already uh, like a month or two ago. And he's saying the terrain is easier, so I'm going to hold him to that. So we got about five or six miles to the connector that would take us back to the car, so we'll make our decision then. But um, so far we're feeling pretty good, so we're probably going to try to push the whole 26 long miles with the Chuck Kuiper Trail. So this is the trail for quite a while and it's almost impassable but it's overgrown you'll find this a lot on the trail especially on the western side thankfully it's not stinging nettle but we're just kind of really worried and being cautious because of snakes right now made it to the cross connector and basically since this trail is made up of two loops of west and east you can continue on and make one giant loop or you can take the connector and it will it, both trails meet at the connector they join there and then you can get back to the to the parking area so we are trying to figure out how to keep going now onto the east loop to try to finish that out today so that's we are now we did almost eight miles today we still have about 18 more to go and it's what time is it it is almost 10.30, so we're gonna try to push it out. And he keeps saying it's not quite as bad as the west side, because he did the east side before, but I don't believe him. <laughs> so we're gonna try to figure out where, which direction we need to go, and then we're gonna keep on keeping on. about 10 miles in for the day we're at mile 31 if you're doing the whole loop and we stopped at a very nice creek for lunch we're just we're finished up we're heading back out so we got about 16 miles and it is about uh 12 30 ish somewhere between 12 30 and 1 so we got a lot of time a lot of miles to make up yet and uh, we're only carrying one liter of water at a time now and that's been so far been working because we've just been drinking as we go and then filling up at water sources and they seem to have been pretty plentiful so far. So we're hoping it stays that way. And if not, you know, whatever, we'll, we'll figure it out. So, but we're trying to go light because we're uh, about to hit some heavy terrain 
and we want to try to go as fast as we can. So we're back, back up and rolling. mile almost at mile 36 probably 35 and three quarters and that's for the trail not for the day we're about almost at mile 15 for the day and it's only what time was it three o'clock 3 30 about 3 15 so we're making pretty good miles but we are about to climb up some hellish ascents again so um, we're going to end up slowing down but we're looking maybe to get back to the car at like eight or nine o'clock tonight so um, we're gonna have to get moving because we've got about 11 miles left for the trip Another sea of stinging nettle, as far as the eye can see. It's one of the reasons why to wear long pants on this. The terrain has been horrible. It's probably 6.30. We got about eight miles to go. And the terrain is just hard. so many blowdowns and you have to get on your stomach to crawl through. And now stinging nettle waist high, sometimes chest high. And now to top it off, it's raining on us. So we think the plan is we got about three and a half miles to get to Route 144, which the trail cross crosses several times. And we think we're just going to take the road for the next couple miles back uh, to the car because this trail is poorly blazed. It's, it's not defined at all. So if there are no blazes, you're screwed. So, and we don't want to do that at night. So it's just, it's not fun at all. So we're just going to hit the road and call it from there. So I'll check back in with you in a little bit when we get to the road. There is Route 144 and our salvation. We are currently on Route 144 and trail miles today we hiked because we stopped at um, I think it was mile 21. We were still on the west loop so we did the west loop into the east loop and total miles for today hiked on trail was 22 miles. So we have a road walk now because we're just gonna get off the trail. We decided just to mutually just, we're, just, we're gonna take the road back because the trail just wasn't fun. I mean, it was just such rough terrain. There's no vistas, nothing, no views. And the blazes, a lot of them were faded. And the one thing that I really noticed is when there are two blazes and you have one and one on top, if the blaze on top is off to the right, that's supposed to be in a right turn. And if it's off to the left, it's supposed to mean a left turn. If it's right above it, it's supposed to mean, hey, watch out. There's, you know, something to watch out ahead. Well, they didn't do that. A lot of them, they were just right above each other. You had no idea where the trail turned. Sometimes it was offset to the right. You think it's a right turn. It was like a hard left turn. And the trail itself, I mean, there was a lot of comments in all trails about how crappy and bad the trail was. For a while there, I was like, nah, it's, you know, just some rough terrain, but no. It is crappy. We had chest high stinging nettle today, and I'm not kidding, it was chest high. A lot of the trail was totally overgrown. You couldn't see the trail. You had to stop and look for blazes. I mean, and then when it was clear, the trail itself was not really defined. So this is a very lightly traveled trail. And I would say about 65 to 70% of the trail, you're walking on the side of a mountain slanted. And then it gets overgrown. It's very hard to, it's just not fun. You're hiking and there was nothing really worth 
hiking for because you there was no vistas no vistas at all actually the best vista was the parking lot there was an overlook at the parking lot you know would i do this trail again absolutely not and would i recommend it for anybody no i mean some people may like the challenge but I wasn't out here to conquer a trail you know i was out here to have some fun and hike and it just was miserable the blow down oh you'll read in the comments on all trails too that there's so many blowdowns there were I don't know, all around, it was like, you know, you have PA trail miles, you get, you know, hills, roots, rocks, and I'm, I'm adding rattlesnakes since both of us almost got bit by rattlesnakes this time around. Very close, me almost in the face. I mean, basically, maybe if you do this in the springtime, earlier spring, um, Dakota did the east side, the entire east side in the spring, and he said it was way less overgrown, so it was a little bit more manageable to hike, but, yeah, I'm not coming back and finishing the East Loop. So you you guys, if you want to, to conquer this trail, you are more than welcome. Have at it. It's, a, it's definitely a challenge and it's getting late, getting dark and we're just done. So with that, I know I was rambling on. I'm gonna finish out the video here. And since we did 22, we got three, that'll be a 25 mile day of walking. So we're beat and thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.